Now I'm going to show you how to find the directional derivative of this surface at this given location in this direction. So what that means is you've got your surface, so you would punch your surface into Google and see what it looks like. So it looks something like this. So that's your surface. So imagine your surface looking something like this. Well, at this given point, five across and uh, two up. So that means one, two, three, four, five, and then two in the y direction, one, two. So you're looking at this particular point here. So you, you are looking at this particular point right here. So uh, looking at your xy plane, so looking at your xy plane, you can imagine this as being your domain. So your xy domain, and you, we are talking about this point, 5, 2. So at 5, 2, when it comes to directional derivative, we can work out the, the derivative in any given direction. But uh, for our particular case, we want it in this particular direction. We want it in this particular direction. We want it in this particular direction, where it's minus 3 and then 4 up. Minus 3 and then 4 up. We want it in this direction uh, where it's minus 3 and then 4 up. So what that means is at this point here, uh, in that direction, so it means you, you've got to imagine your vertical sheet of paper, your vertical sheet of paper looking like this, something like this. And, um, and at that particular point, uh, where the vertical sheet of paper intersects with the surface, let's just imagine it intersects something like this. So at that particular point, you would shoot it up, straight up, and then it, you're looking at this particular point. So you finding the, um, the directional derivative is really you finding out the gradient of this, um, of this line for that, sheet of, for that vertical sheet of paper. So ultimately, we want to find this, which I will elaborate more on, on the notation later on. So this is a change in the height. And uh, S is really along the along our intended path, which I will explain more on this S later on. At at this particular point, in this particular direction, which I will explain more later on for this U hat later on. So ultimately, we want to find this. Okay. So so the first task is to create a particle. We want to simulate a particle moving along our intended path. So we want to get a particle to move like this as time ticks away. We want the particle to move like this. So we're going to use decimals to simulate this. So at our particular point, if you want to come up with the parametric equations to, to drive our particle along our intended path, so we want the particle to move like this. We want the particle to move like this. So we're going to use parametric equations. So set up your variable, one variable, which we are going to imagine it as t time. So as time ticks away, uh, so you start here at this particular point, which is right here at five two, and then uh, and then if you want the particle to move in this direction, well look look at this and this. You want as when you you want it so that um, when t equals one, you would have moved three across in the negative direction, and then four up, and then four up. So um, so using this technique, we can drive our particle in this direction. And then when time equals 2, so 1, 2, when time equals 2, you would have moved 1, uh, you would have moved this much and this much up. And then that's when time equals 1. And then time equals 2, you would have moved a ne another negative 2 and then another 4 up. So you can see you're moving in that direction. Uh, when time equals 3, you would have moved another minus 3 and then 4 up. So you can see you are heading in that direction. So this would describe the, um, the parametric equations to, describe, to, um, to drive our particle um, in that direction. So what you've got here is this situation where you've got a function where you input time, just one variable time. Time would then, time would then work out the x and y location. And then from that, we can bung in x and y, and then that would then give us z, the height of the surface. So anyway, let's, let's try and simulate this in Desmos. So punch this into Desmos. Hang on. So um, re remember, we are currently at 5, 2. If you move negative 3 across, so you will be at a location of 2, comma. And then if you move 4 up from 2, that would take you to 6. So this point here is 6. 
So if we jump to Desmos, hang on. So Desmos. So this is our location five two and two six. We want to drive our particle in this straight line. So to do that, um, we would have to hang on. Remember the parametric equations would be would be would be. Um, hang on, let me think. The parametric equations would be would be uh, five plus sorry five minus three t. So hang on, jump to Desmos. So punch in our location um, five minus three t, but we can't use t because t is reserved within Desmos. Uh, so we're going to use a, um, and then comma, and then jump back to here, and then uh, the y location would be given by two plus four t. So hang on. So jump back to here. So it would be um, two plus four. We can't use t, so it has to be a. And then close this off, and then fix the bracket here. So now add a slider, add a slider, and then uh, we want it to range t equals zero. Let's just let it tick away uh, from zero to I don't know. Let's say uh, five. So when t equals zero, you can see our particle is right here. And then as time ticks away, you can see it's moving in in that straight line. So when t equals 1, it, it would be right here. And then t equals 2, it, you can see that it's heading. You can see that our particle is moving in that straight line. So you can see by, by varying t, our particle moves in, in our intended straight line. OK, so hang on. So back to here. So we've created a way to drive our particle. We've created a way to drive our particle in that direction but the problem here is that um, is that when t equals 1 when t equals 1 the distance that we've we've traveled is well we've got to use Pythagoras this squared would be 9 this would be um, 16 um, well, well uh, let, let's just I don't know let's just call it x x squared so x equals um, x equals um, 5 so th this distance here is 5 the problem is that in a period of one second you would have traveled let's say 5 meters but you you don't you don't want that to be the case because you want to create a situation where uh, one increment of time would mean you travel a distance of 1 you don't you, you don't want the case where you, you don't want our current case where one increment of time you would have traveled five meters across one two three four five you don't want you don't want the situation where one increment of time you would have traveled a distance of five meters you want to create a situation where one increment of time would mean you would have moved a distance of one uh, so so that means this is one one increment another increment of time you would have moved a distance of two one two and then that means is one two and then if you, this is what you want to create you want to create it so that uh, another increment of time would mean you would have moved one across here and then another one across here so you 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 basically need to cut this up into five equal pieces because well at, at the moment we've got a vector v we've got a vector v what i'm trying to say is that we need to look at our uh, our unit vector where the magnitude is one so uh, so you take your vector and then you cut it into you divide it by its magnitude uh, you divide it by its um, its magnitude and then that will then give you your your unit vector so what that means is th we know that this magnitude is five so hang on so one two three four five so that means you cut this up into five equal pieces and then you cut this up into five equal pieces. So what that means is one increment of time, one increment of time, you would have moved one across and then another one up. So what that means is on here, hang on, let me clear this. So well, by, by you dividing it by its magnitude, this is what's happening. By you dividing by mag, its magnitude, this will then become this. By you dividing by its magnitude, it means that one increment of time, you would you'd move one across and then this much up so you've traveled a distance of one the magnitude is one 
So that means it's you moving by one. So what that means is down here, it 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 it, um, it relates to a distance of of one. So when when you increase time again by one, and then this would mean you move this much across and then this much up. So you can see the magnitude is another one. It ma it matches up with our our intended path. Our intended path is here. So now you you would have moved from here to here, which is another distance of one. So what that means is this is now at a distance of let's say two meters, and then an increment another increment of time you would have moved this much across this much up. So again you would have a, a magnitude well you would have a distance of one meter. So here you would have moved from here to here. So on on this diagram it would be. Three. So the point here is that we've created a situation where an increment of time would match up with an increment of the distance of our intended distance because we are talking about this distance here. So s is really the the um, the di s is is in the direction of our intended path. In the future, hang on. At the moment, so you've got your x, you've got your x y uh, y plane. Um, in the future, you you won't be traveling in a straight line. You will be traveling like this. So dx would mean uh, the distance along the x direction. dy would mean the distance in the y direction. ds would be the distance in our intended path. So it would be like this. This is our ds. So so we want to use ds because we want to talk about. We want to frame everything in in reference to our intended direction. We don't want to work in terms of time, so we abandon time and work in terms of s. So s is talking about the the um, the movement in our intended path. In this case it's just a straight line. But in the future our s would be along our actual path. So um so so now we have the ability to drive our particle. So hang on. So jumping back to here. So now if I divide this by by five by its magnitude hang on divided by five and then divide this by five by its magnitude so now we've got in a way we are working with our unit vector um, so what that means is um, remember the, the whole journey because it has a magnitude of five the whole journey should be five seconds it should take five seconds so look when time equals one a equals one here. You can see that it has traveled a distance of exactly one, one meter. When time equals two, when time equals two, then it has traveled two meters and so on. So the whole journey would take five seconds. The whole journey takes five seconds. So going back to here, we've created a situation where an increment of time one increment of time would mean you've moved a distance of one meter. Another increment of time, you would have moved another one meter, and so on. So this t here matches up with this s, the the um, the distance in in terms of our intended path. Okay, so so now we can abandon t and just use s because we want to frame everything in terms of our intended path. We don't want to work with time anymore. Time was just a tool that we use to create our our parametric equations. We now want to work in terms of S, in terms of S. I will continue in the next video, okay?